All right, hi everybody. Um, as usual, those of you uh, who are used to sort of diving in on these, you'll know that we've got the countdown going now. When it gets to 30 seconds, then you should start to hear some music and then, uh, then it all kicks off. And hopefully this time, as it's been a few weeks now, hopefully I remember to have my microphone on. Uh, Brian, Anthony, I do have my phone right in front of me just in case. But uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. So if you can, just give me a shout out in the chat room. Just say it's coming through loud and clear. That would be a real uh, big help and it would help calm the nerves. Who's that saying I've got a strange accent? <laughs> Jason Lacey, how very dare you? I speak proper England, I does. All right, so we're fast approaching the 30-second mark, and like I said, you should, when it gets to that point, start to hear music gradually getting louder and louder until we get to the zero zero, and then we'll crack on. I've got some uh, stuff to share with you tonight, which hopefully is going to be really helpful. Whoops, there we go. I'm talking. <laughs> Nearly forgot again then. 
Um, folks, thanks so much for joining me. I can see there's been a lot of activity in the chat room there. Uh, we've got great numbers, which is really, really good to see. But I guess that's not surprising considering we are on a, on a lockdown and we're doing the right thing. Um, obviously, originally this was going to be at 8, uh, 8 o'clock, but I changed it to 8.30 um but uh wow i don't know for those of you in the uk obviously every thursday now we're having this thank you to our uh our nhs and uh just being outside then at the front door when all that clapping was going on was was quite a thing really really moving um i think probably a lot of us have got friends who are involved in the nhs in some way uh, my wife is i've got some good friends who are involved in the nhs my brother uh, my brother Greg, who is uh, in the army, he's working in a hospital in the Midlands at the minute. Who's um, he volunteered to kind of go in there and help people who've got the COVID nineteen. So that was really emotional seeing that. But right before I kind of lose the plot a little bit, uh, what are we going to go through tonight? Well, I want to kind of show you uh, some of the things that went into making this particular picture here. This is of a of, a, of an absolute superstar of a girl, a girl called Sophie who I got to know briefly when I've spent some time with friends in Wales. And she very kindly came along to be photographed for part of the timeless tutorial that I released on Monday. Um, so what I want to do with this is, what I want to actually do with this particular uh, evening, I'm not going to take up horrendous amounts of time. I just thought it'd be nice to kind of get together. Uh, but I want to show you how that was done. Okay, obviously no, this is going to make a lot of sense for those of you who've got the timeless tutorial because in that I talk about using a single light source, just a little four AA battery speed light, you know, an inexpensive light uh, into a modifier like a softbox or even an umbrella to create a really nice portrait. And then what we did with this picture of Sophie was just add in an extra light and just do a use a thing called a flag. Now, for those of you who don't know, actually, funny, very, very quick, funny story. Somebody contacted me before we went live with this with with all the best intentions absolutely the best intentions to say i think you've made a spelling mistake on the title for the video because it says um using you uh, uh, one light and a, a flag and he thought it should say a flash but you know <laughs> it was great that people are out there looking out for me so i don't make too much of a fool of myself as i nearly did by not pressing the microphone right at the start there um, but right then, okay, so a flag, what is it? It can be a piece of material, it can be anything. And the idea behind it in its simplest terms is to restrict where light falls on your subject or whatever it is that you're photographing. So what I've got is I've got a video which was done while we were doing the tutorial filming for the rest of it. I've put that all together today. So I'm going to play that for you now. It's about two and a bit minutes long. And then I'll keep it on the chat room. If there's any questions, we can go through that. After you've seen the video, I want to then throw, uh, show some retouching to show all the little fine touches that were done with this picture of Sophie. And then um, before we wrap up, I've got a, a really important video to show you. Uh, one that me and some friends worked on before this outbreak hit us. Uh, but I really do need you to see that because obviously we're all going through some interesting times at the moment. But there are people out there who were going through hard times even before this hit us. And that's what the video was for, was to kind of help those folks. So talk about timing. Do you know what I mean? There's never a good time to kind of, you know, that you, this could be happening to us at the moment, is there? But I still think it's important that the video we've created gets shared out. And I want to share that with you after this. But let me just show this video showing how this stuff was done with Sophie. Then we'll crack on with the retouching. All right. So as an added, uh, added extra bonus video, I thought I'd put this one together for you just to show extra things that we can do. Now, you'll, you'll remember in the pack that you've already seen when we've gone through the setups with Anthony, where we had the one light setup, where we just did the kind of like the three quarter shot with him sat on the chair, and then we did the really close in portrait. So I thought in this little video, we'd kind of take it up a level. I hate saying that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Bring it up a level. And I've brought in another light. Well, let me just kind of show you what we've got here, first of all. We've got the uh, Westcott, the large Octa. That's kind of positioned in the same way as before, but the only difference is that I've slightly twisted it away from the background so that we don't have so much light fall onto that. But I've actually brought in a second light as well. Now that again is a speed light. The main one on the right hand side of here is a speed light, again in the TTL in group A. The one over there is in TTL in group B. So I can separate the two and control them independently, which is really, really useful. But what you'll see is rather than me having that light position, that's actually in a medium octa by the way as well, 
Rather than having that firing straight onto Sophie, I've put a flag in there. And a flag is something, it's just a, this is a one by Westcott, and it's a piece of material that you can use. We've got large ones, we've got smaller ones, just to block off light that you don't want it to hit in certain areas. So we'll kind of do a little bit of footage so you can see how that's positioned. But what we've got here, then this picture of Sophie. Sophie's looking uh, straight at the camera. We've got a roll neck top on here so that the, uh, the rest of Sophie, apart from her face, will be quite dark so that your eyes are drawn straight to her face. We are shooting this one really quite wide open at F2. So again with this one, I've had to focus on the eyes using that focus peaking that you would have seen before. But we're gonna take a quick shot of Sophie now so that her eyes are really, really sharp. But that light on the, the second light over on the left hand side there, that's just gonna bring a bit of light onto Sophie's chin. Just to give it a little bit of separation, a bit more interest. And it's not that much needed to do there to kind of take the picture that you saw before and change it just by bringing in one extra light. So let's take a quick photo of Sophie then. So we'll kind of focus on the eyes. We'll zoom in first of all. We'll do that focus peaking so I can see that yellow hatched on her eyes. So they're nice and sharp, that's it. Okay, so, so just put your nose again in line with my finger and just come across us a little bit. There we go. Now chin down, just a little bit, that's it. And then just kind of staring straight down the lens to see if you're able to see straight into the camera. That's it. Okay, so hold that. And we'll take that shot there. So you can see from that shot there, very, very similar to what we did in the first download that you got, but just by bringing in one extra light in the TTL, just to give a little bit of shape onto the side of the face there, completely changes the look of the picture. Very, very simple and easy to do. Now with that, like I said, it's in TTL. Uh, it's on zero, zero at the moment, so there's no kind of compensation adding more or less light into what the, the flash thinks it should be. But I think what I might do is just bring it down just a touch. So we'll go down to maybe 0.7, something like that just to knock a little bit of light so it's not quite so bright. So again, Sophie looking straight at me, and we'll take that shot there. Now when it comes to using the flags, if I'll just kind of move around here for a second, you'll be able to see the distance that that flag is from the actual light source. What we don't want to do is have the flag right in front of the light, because that then will allow the light to spread out before it hits Sophie. We have to kind of judge it so that it's a distance enough away from the light so that as the light goes off, it gets blocked and then it's gonna be hitting Sophie without allowing it to spread too much. Because I wanna kind of control that it does hit the side of her face but doesn't then have spread so that it comes around too much, all right? All right, so I kind of hope that makes sense. Uh, we didn't do a lot of film in regards to the flags, but you can kind of see there just how a simple addition of something blocking off where that light goes can make a big difference to a picture that you've just done. Just by adding that, that little bit of kiss of light onto, that, uh, onto the jaw on the side of the head just there. Now, while that was coming through, there were a couple of questions coming through onto the chat room. Uh, somebody put no audio, now okay. <laughs> um, okay, so Mark Leslie, he's put, and this is regards to the actual um, timeless uh, tutorial, that one just there. Basically, he's just basically said in the tutorial, there's a bit where I show how you can um, select somebody when you're adding texture to them, so they really kind of stand out. Uh, I add texture to them and how I very quickly make a selection of them using something in Photoshop called Select Subject. Now, if you haven't got the latest versions of, of this kind of software, then yeah, there are so many different ways you can do it. Um, quick, uh, quick selection tool is, is one of them. Do you know what I mean? It really is. There's, there's so many different ways. And what I'll do is in the comment, sorry, in the description part of this video, I'll put some links to videos I've got that show the other versions of, the, of this software being used to make selections. So I'll put that in there as well. And somebody put, is uh, this particular tutorial different to Rosa, which has been out in my store for a, a good while now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Because in that one there, we were using studio lights. This is just little portable battery, uh, four AA battery lights. Uh, it's uh, showing a different look. It's the, t it's the look that I was doing with my veterans portraits, but also it's showing how I do those really close in shallow depth of field portraits as well. So that's that. Um, okay, so regards to the retouch, let me just take you onto my uh, desktop because, like I said, this is the this was the final picture of Sophie, and pretty much the same retouching was done on this one as it was on the picture of my friend Anthony, who you saw at the end of that video as well. Uh, the only difference, obviously, with this one is that I did a black and white conversion, and I'll show you how I do that 
in Photoshop as well because you don't always need to get extra plugins and all that kind of stuff because obviously that's even more expense but my camera is in the way of this layer stack so I'm going to bring that out of the way so I can see it just here I don't normally keep it here but just to show you so those of you who've got uh, timeless you'll pretty much see recognize some of the layers that we've got in here that go through the retouching part of it because I take you through that uh, that whole process but let me just turn off all the layers apart from the original one the background layer when we first brought the picture in from Lightroom into Photoshop so you can see what we've got all right so that is what you saw in the video the out of camera picture of Sophie with a with a few things done to it in Lightroom and I don't do that much in Lightroom you can do so much in there but I tend not to uh, bit of color balance bit of kind of sharpening and what have you and that's pretty much it and then I send it over into my happy place but let me just take you through a couple of things here well first of all we did the let me just double click on the hand tool to bring it a bit closer Frequency separation, that's one of the things we take through. Then a little bit of cleaning up on Sophie's skin. Everybody's got non-permanent blemishes, so we just get rid of those. But then the bit I want to show you now is this. Now, if I turn this layer on and off, keep an eye on the kind of jawline here of Sophie. Because obviously what we did was uh, we had a, another light over here with that flag like you just saw the video coming in so that the light was hitting the side of Sophie's face and then onto this little bit of a jawline here. But I actually wanted more than we got on there. And this is the thing about using flags or, you know, to, to block the light off. It can be quite a, a lengthy, finicky kind of a process because just the slightest movement of that flag and your light can make a massive difference. Especially if you're using speed lights where you don't have... Uh, like a modeling light if you've got a modeling light on a studio light much much easier to set up but when you're kind of using speed lights where there's just a flash going off it can take quite a bit of time to set up so this is the before this is the after so what I've done here I've added in a little bit more of a kiss of light onto the, the kind of jawbone there the jawline of, of Sophie and I want to quickly show you how we do that so I'm going to dive over to this picture here which is at that particular stage really really simple to do this uh, I'm sure there are many many other ways you could do it but this is the way that I found just work let me just take that layer off there and I'll just zoom in just a touch so this is how the jawline is without that addition but if I wanted to add more light into this the way that I did this in this particular retouch was I went over to the adjustments in the top right hand corner of the screen we've got all multitude of adjustments here and I think I just chose a levels adjustment and when we do that you get the levels adjustment brings with it its own uh, layer mask uh, but I don't actually do anything to that at all we don't do any addition any changes to the actual levels all I wanted was that particular layer to allow me now to use a blend mode because what I want to do is brighten the whole picture up so now that I've got this particular adjustment in here all I'm going to do is go to the blend modes and go from normal this is the great thing about the more recent versions of this you know Photoshop software as you hover over you can actually see in real time what that blend mode is going to do and the one I'm going to use is screen let's just move this out of the way just a touch but you can see as I do that the whole picture everything kind of brightens up and obviously we don't want that so I want to hide the brightening and only bring it in in this particular area down here so we've got the layer mask the white layer mask means we can see the result of this blend mode so I need to hide it so we need to turn that to black we can do that a whole multitude of ways we can go to the image menu adjustments and choose invert so to turn it to the opposite so white will become black and you can see there's a keyboard shortcut keyboard shortcut rather of control or command I and you can see now that effect is still there but it's hidden behind that black layer mask so what I'm going to do is just get a normal brush I'm going to get a normal brush from the toolbar here a soft brush let me just right click now and I can actually make sure that the brush is 0% hardness and I'm going to make sure that I have a white foreground color in the toolbar now what I want to show you now is obviously what you're going to what I'm not going to do is just go in here at 100% and just brighten it all up it'd be way too harsh and really obvious what I've done so I'm going to kind of try and build the effect up but the way I did that was using opacity as those of you who kind of know your way around Photoshop would probably guess that's what I'd use uh, but also I used flow okay and I want to kind of show you how I uh, why I would use that flow so here we've got just a simple uh, new document and I've got my black foreground color let's just zoom in so at the moment in the toolbar and I can't zoom in on this I'm afraid um, that's why one of the reasons I'm changing back to Mac because I'll be able to do that 
Uh, in the top of the options here, we've got the opacity is 100 and the flow is at 100. So if I kind of just press down with this brush, bring my cursor over here, hold the shift key down and click, that's what that line would give you. So if I brushed across, you would see a 100% opacity black line going across. Now, if I wanted to paint um, using the opacity, I could just lower the opacity down. So let's just say I press one on my keyboard and that's a shortcut there, so it goes down to 10%. If I press two, it would be 20, three, 30, and so on and so forth. But we'll say we wanted to paint in nice and gently at 10% and build it up. And this is what you'd get. You'd press down and go to the right. And if I didn't lift off and press down again, if I went back to the left, nothing happens, apart from you'd probably just see a little bit more of that color being put down. But it doesn't actually build up and get denser. For opacity, I need to lift off then press down and then go across and just keep doing that lifting up pressing down lifting up pressing down and as i do that you can see that that starts to build up now let's just take the opacity back to 100 but this time i'll use the flow so for me to use the flow here i can reduce that down as well it's at 100 percent at the moment if i want to take that down to say 10 percent I just hold down the shift key and then the numerical number. So shift and one gives me 10%, shift and two gives me 20% and so on and so forth. But I'll just hold down one for 10%. So this is now kind of like what the um, what the opacity was in, in effect. But the difference here is when I press down and go across to the right, I'm not going to lift up, but I'm just going to carry on going back. And you can see here without me lifting up, every time I go over, it kind of just builds up. All right, it builds up very gently. It very sort of it's a great way of blending in that kind of like the building up of that color and that brush without it looking too obvious. All right. So what I did with Sophie, I used a combination of flow and opacity because I wanted to take this nice and gently, really slow and build up that lighting effect on her face without going in hard. And that's the thing about when you're doing the retouching is just do things nice and slowly and just build up. It's the small things in, in retouching that make a big, big difference. But it's also very easy to go over the top. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take my opacity down to 10% and my flow is now at 10%. And what this basically will mean is when I press down and go from right to left, Every time I go over it, that flow is building it up. It'll build it up and build it up and build it up. But it'll only go as far as 10% of the opacity of the brush. That's the limit it'll go to. If I want it to go brighter now, I lift up, press down, and then go right to left. And as I go back and forth roughly 10 times, that'll then take the opacity up to 20%. Lift up, press down, back and forth. That'll eventually build it up to 30 and so on and so on and so on. So hopefully you get the idea with that. So for me, when I was doing this with Sophie, rather than me going in really, really hard to build this up, what I did was this. The opacity at 10%, the flow at 10%, and we've got a white foreground colour to paint on a black brush so that I'm only going to reveal the brightness on this part of her cheek. The great thing is as well, when you use the flow, the brush strokes blend in much, much more easily. If you notice when you use opacity, you can actually see where you lift up and press down. You'll see that. And obviously you don't want that to happen when you're working on this kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to press down on Sophie's jaw and I'm just going to keep going backwards and forwards on that part of the jawline there where I want that light to build up. Now this is one of those things, it's kind of like dodging and burning. You won't see it straight away. It's when you kind of look away and then come back again, you go, blimey, I didn't even notice that. But look, you probably can't see what I've done there. But let me just turn that layer off and on. Can you see already it's starting to come in? Really, really subtle how it's building it up. And this is just something that you take your time. Let's go down again. So now these strokes will build up to 20%. But I don't have to take it all the way up. I'm just going to go back and forth just a few times. So that flow just gradually builds up, kind of like using a spray can. If you hold the nozzle of a spray can in one area, it will lay down some paint and then build up and up and up and up and up. But now look if I turn that off and on, off and on. Now let's just double click on the hand tool to take that all the way back and now look. Much more pleasing of a line there where that light would have kind of hit and gone round the jawline. So that, that kind of really was a simple fix for me. And of course what you've got to be careful of because you are using 
a very soft edged brush and we've got this jawline of Sophie just here. It'd be very easy to spill over into these areas and obviously if you do that all you need to do then is change the colour of your foreground colour to black and then just paint over the areas where you do not want that to, uh, to appear. You might find you need to bring up your opacity and your flow to 100 again and then just paint that away. So that's just one little thing I wanted to show you just there. So that's before, after, before and after. All right, so that's that one. Uh, let's quickly a quick look in the old uh, room, just in the chat room. What if you go too far with this system? How can you go back to say two stages? That all depends, really. That's John Cannon there. John, all you, really with that one there. That's that's one of the reasons why you do this with really low settings on that flow and that opacity, so you can gradually build it up. Now, obviously, you can use that Control or Command Z to go back a few steps, and it all depends how far you can go back with it. Is how much of a history state you have put into Photoshop because I think by default it's something like 20 steps but you can increase that but the problem with that is it takes up more memory which is more drain on your computer so I would suggest really just take your time slow down the best advice I was ever given and just have your opacity really low and your flow really low and just do a few strokes come you know turn away from it look back with fresh eyes and just gradually gradually build it up all right so that's that part there but let's just go back to the picture of Sophie again let's just have a look at these layers uh, and we'll start to build them up again these ones here there's a lot of these ones here that are actually in the tutorial that's not me being crafty to say if you want to see them you've got to get the tutorial I just don't I know there are people who've got the tutorial that are in the room now and I don't want to have to repeat all that for them anyway but and I, I you know a lot of this stuff I've kind of covered over a multitude of videos anyway but there's a softened skin one I'm going to be doing a new updated version of that particular technique there those of you who got the tutorial that'll be sent out to you clean up and then there's camera raw lighting dodging and burning. And look at that. I mean, look at the difference there. The camera raw lighting and the dodging and burning combined really starts to make Sophie's eyes and the kind of sharp areas of her face really come forward. That's the great thing about this technique that we go through. Such a shallow depth of field at F2, anything beyond uh, this point of her eyes here is losing focus. The amount of times I've had people say to me, what medium format camera are you using? I have lost count. Um, the answer is not. I'm not using. I'm using a Sony, uh, and I I definitely have not got a medium format camera. Right. So Topaz impression was for the color, but the next thing I want to show you for those of you who don't know this, this was an extra little addition here. This little light source, real cheeky little light there. All right. Now I used to do this a lot. I used to love doing this a lot. And you might get some people say, well. Why wouldn't you photograph it already in the shot? You know, there are plenty of people out there that would kind of angle it so that they actually had a little bit of that lens flare coming in. And that's all well and good, and that's great if you do that. But my kind of feeling with this is, and I guess this comes from my retouching days, is that I would rather add it in later on rather than be stuck with it constantly. Because I don't know really when I've got this in front of me, do I like it with it or without it? And if I photograph it with it, then I'm kind of stuck with it. But I want to show you how we do that, and this is incredibly simple. So that's obviously the after bit there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new blank layer just here, and I'm going to get a brush, and I'm going to change my foreground color to white. And again, this has got to be a soft brush. So let's just right click, make sure we're on 0% hardness, and making sure that in the toolbar, the tool options rather, at the top of the screen, the options bar, We'll make the opacity back to 100. So I press 0 on the keyboard, sets that to 100. And the flow back to 100 by pressing Shift and then 0. So that takes that to 100 as well. Now for this light source, I'm going to need a really big brush. And the maximum size we can take a brush to in the more recent versions of Photoshop is 5,000 pixels. But the danger with doing that is if I did a brush this big, now this might, fingers crossed this doesn't, but this might make the computer go a bit odd. Uh, if I now press down to add a brush stroke like that, you think, well, there's the light source. All I need to do now is move it into the top left-hand corner. But bear in mind, we are using a really soft brush. If I now click and drag that, can you see this line? Let me just zoom in just a touch. Can you see that line just there where the softness of that brush went off the edge of the picture? And obviously, that's not what we want. So, yeah, we don't want that. So the trick here is to not make it a big brush first of all, but to add a blank layer, get your brush, and just get a really, well, it doesn't really matter what size, but a small brush. As long as it's soft, you're good to go. So we'll add a brush just there. Then I'll go to uh, Edit, 
and free transform, or you've got the keyboard shortcut of Control or Command T to get these transform handles. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit now because I need to make this big, really big. So we we'll click on the top left hand corner there, holding on the shift key so it keeps it in proportion and we'll drag outwards, nice and big like this. Something like that should be good. Press enter to commit that into the size it is. Then I'll zoom back in. I'll get my move tool from the toolbar, click down and drag. Something like that. So it's a, such a simple effect. Now sometimes you might notice you get a little bit of banding in that light source that you've done there. But the crazy thing about that is, some people say that how can I get rid of the banding? Well, you can add like a new layer with one uh, pixel radius of noise or one amount rather of noise. Actually to get rid of that band, uh, that banding, once you finish the retouching, if you create a merged or stamp layer to the top of your layer stack, it disappears. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how, it just disappears, which is kind of magic. So that's the light source there. Now what I like about this is, it kind for me now, this picture kind of makes sense because if we turn that off, we've got this highlight, nice light going around the side of Sophie's face and now obviously onto her jawline. For me, and maybe this is just me, I don't know, but the way I look at this picture now is I'd be going, well, why has she got that light on there? Where is it coming from? For me, this kind of like may, helps the picture to make sense that, ah, right, so this highlighted bit here and down here is coming from this light up here. So unless you kind of tell people, people don't really know that's what you've done. They'll just take it for granted that you've actually added that light during the actual photo shoot because they see these highlights on the person's face. So it can be really, really simple uh, and effective little technique there. So that's that one. And one other little thing I wanna show you is how I do my black and white conversions. There are books written on this, on how you can do black and white conversions. So many different ways you can do black and whites. Lightroom and Camera Raw now have them built in. There are presets in there, which are really, really good. There's some really good ones. But despite that, I still turn to a really simple method in Photoshop. And the, what I use is over in the adjustments in the top right hand corner again, in the bottom right hand corner, you have this one here called a gradient map. And these are, these are really good. So what I do to make sure that it's gonna work, I press D on my keyboard, first of all, that's D. That makes sure that my foreground and background color are their default colors of black and white. And then I'll come over to that adjustment layer there and I'll just click down once on that and it gives me straight out the bag, that gives me a really, really good black and white. But you don't have to just leave it there. You can really kind of dive into this now and finesse it. And the way you do that is when you add that gradient map adjustment layer, you obviously get your properties and you can see that gradient bar just there. If I now click on that, it'll bring up the gradient editor, okay? And then we've got this bar at the bottom, this other gradient, and we've got the black point and the white point. And obviously in the middle here is where the two meet and we get this kind of variations of gray. So what I can do is let's just say now that I want to add a little bit more brightness, a little bit more white into this picture. I will click on the white point and I'll just drag that over. And you can see now I can start to bring in some more white into the picture there. But the other great thing about this is the minute you click on either the bottom right or the bottom left, you can then click in this little diamond right in the middle. And this allows you to control how those gray areas blend. Okay, so you can have it really quite harsh just there by bringing it over to the left or bring it over to the right to help it's a bit more subtle. Obviously you can click on the black to bring that across to the right so you add more black into the picture. But for me, I just think this is a fantastic way uh, of doing great black and whites without going and buying some other kind of plugin. I think that it used to be called, was it Silver FX Pro 4 or something like that? Uh, that was a really good one. Um, but you don't have to worry about that now. And obviously, like I said, in, in Camera Raw, which we can now use as a filter, if we go to filter, you got camera raw here. If you go into camera raw, you've obviously got the adjustments in there for doing black and whites as well. So that's that. All right, those couple of little things there. Right, let's just dive back to a uh, little old me on the screen. Hopefully that's useful. I don't want to kind of bombard you with stuff with this at the minute. The video that I put together going through that lighting, uh, how to use the flag and the light, hopefully that's useful. And those little bit of retouching steps there. I am going to be sending this out to folks who've already got the tutorial because that's like a little update for you so you get some extra stuff. But 
please please hang around because there's I want to show you a video now this this video is absolutely nothing to do with what we've gone through uh, but I want to show you this video because this means a lot to me and it's uh, and there's some amazing friends of mine who've helped me put this together but the backstory of this is the whole reason why I'm actually here today doing this particular tutorial is purely because of the projects I've been working on since the start of 2019. This Veterans Portraits project called 39 to 45 and how I developed that style. Now, by doing that project, I've got to meet a lot of people, some amazing, amazing people, not just veterans, but people who are doing things for veterans. Uh, and it's been, it really kind of um, became obvious to me that there are things I didn't even know about. Bearing in mind, my brother is a veteran. You know, one of my uncles was in the military as well. I had no idea what went on there in the real world when it came to veterans and how some of them kind of fall by the wayside through no fault of their own. They could fall on hard times with money, uh, relationship issues, all sorts of stuff. And, and because of obviously mental illness, mental health problems, because of PTSD, all that kind of stuff just gets too much for them. And because they've lived in this world where they've been literally told what to do, everything's provided, do this, do that. They come out into the civvy world and then it all becomes a bit too much. And it's, you know, understandably can be very, very hard for them to deal with things. Um, so why am I telling you this? Well, I put together this video. I wanted to raise and I want to raise £50,000 between when I was going to release it and then July when a friend of mine, me and a guy called... Uh, Brian, we're going to be doing a tandem skydive. That's out the window now. That's not going to be happening, certainly in the foreseeable future. But I still want to raise this money. But, you know, loads of people are falling on hard times at the minute, but I've still got to get this out there. I've got to, because like I said at the very start of this particular video, you know, there are a lot of people now who are falling on hard times all over the world. Things are, things are getting tough, but there were people before this COVID-19 coronavirus kind of hit us there are people before this that were really going through bad times. And those particular people I'm thinking about were the veterans that have done stuff for all of us and they're struggling. Now they're really struggling. And the charities that were raising money to help them are really struggling because they can't get where some of their funding was coming from, shaking the bottles there or shaking the tubs rather in places like train stations and shopping centres. They can't do that now. So their money is drastically, drastically dropping out. Um, so the £50,000 I, I will raise, we will do this, however long it takes, I want to split that 50-50. So 25000 will go to the veterans charity, 25000 will go to the taxi charity for military veterans. And I spoke to Danny earlier on, who's the CEO of the veterans charity, who is absolutely run ragged at the minute. They've just got a record number of cases, which is incredibly sad. But even Danny told me tonight that £25,000 for their charity could help 270 veterans. That's 270 lives completely transformed and at least kind of getting those lives in line with us so that we're all at the same kind of level, level playing field with what we're experiencing at the moment. But I've talked enough. Let me just show you the video. And please, again, after the end of the video, there's a few things I want to mention to you uh, to let you know about some people who are doing some incredible stuff. So I'll play the video. Uh, I'll be on the chat room. And I'll see you in a moment. Thank you. 
All right, so uh, in the chat room there, a, a good friend of mine called Mark Wood, he uh, he was asking when can people start donating to this. Folks, I mean, the, the page is, about, is open now. You can see the URL for it, virginmoneygiving.com forward slash help dash veterans. Now, I know this is a big ask, but my God, do you know what I mean? This is this is These people really do need us. And all I'm asking for here, all I'm asking for is just to donate the price of a cup of coffee. You know, we're on lockdown. We can't go to the Costas, the Starbucks, and all that kind of stuff. So the, if you'd have brought one of those tomorrow, rather than spending £2.50 or whatever it is you'd have brought on your mocha, choco, latte, whatever, just just put it towards these folks because these people need it. They really need it. The veterans charity especially are really struggling to get some money in because the old boys who are helping them out raising the money, they are not allowed out for for obvious reasons. But I want to say a massive thank you to people who've helped me with this. My, my best friends, Ian, Anthony, Brian, Steve, Gez, Simon, Tom was the old boy that you saw in the video, and then it was Ian Parsons as well, uh, the taxi driver there from the taxi charity. God dear me, I'm pretty much blooming almost at the edge of blooming crying all the time here at the minute. It's an emotional time. It really is an emotional time. It's just, I think this is just affecting us more than we expect, isn't it, really? And uh, I just wanted to do this to kind of get this out to you. Some other, other little shouts out I wanted to put for you. A uh, good friend of mine. I've made some good mates doing this. Uh, another good friend of mine, a guy called Peter Morgan. Uh, he runs a company called Tech for Togs. He's an, he's an amazing photographer anyway. He's based in Wales. Super, super guy. But this bloke, what he doesn't know about technology when it comes to how it can help photographers isn't worth knowing. He just knows it all. He did an episode on our podcast where he talked about backup strategy. I'm going to be speaking to Peter very, very soon because I'm moving back to using Apple and there's loads of questions I've got, all right? Loads and loads of questions. There's also the uh, Perfect Prints Guide. That If you haven't got that, you can head over to my website and get that. It's completely free. I am doing an update because there's a few little uh, anomalies. If you're a Mac user, there's a few little screen differences. So I need to get uh, those added in there as well. Folks, that's it. Uh, that's all I've got for you tonight. I really hope that's useful. Uh, Timeless is obviously still available. There's that discount, that special offer thing that's there till Sunday. But, you know, if you want to check it out, by all means do. Uh, but all I'm going to say for now is just uh, thank you for tuning in. Numbers are brilliant. It's been absolutely brilliant numbers. It's great to see so many people from all over the place who've tuned in tonight. Uh, I will be doing more of these. I think it's important that we keep this kind of stuff going. In fact, talking about that, as photographers, as creatives, no matter what it is that you're doing, what what are you doing now while we're on lockdown to keep yourself creative? Because there are there are things that we can do. For example, I was telling my mates last night, I have I've got this little model here. You know that I'm into me models and me spitfires and stuff like that. This little model here that my wife brought me. I am tomorrow. I'm going to go out into the garden. I'm going to put that onto a stand. I'm going to get a tripod. I'm going to photograph it with the sky behind it, and I'm going to recreate a painting that I've seen doing that not because i want to you know just to keep me in the creative mode learning different things because i guarantee you there'll be stuff i'll learn doing that that i wouldn't have done retouching people like sophie's face or whatever do you know what i mean so i'm looking forward to doing that uh that should be interesting to see but i'll share that I, you know keep an eye on the blog i'll share the process all the behind the scenes stuff if it turns out rubbish who cares it's kind of keeping me in that kind of creative zone isn't it i guess uh, but yeah, that's it. We'll do another one of these. I'll keep you posted. Um, thanks so much for you know taking time out of your lockdown to ch to tune in. Uh, but I genuinely mean this. Stick to what you've been told, the advice you've been told. Keep safe, keep well, and fingers crossed. You know those incredibly clever people out there who are working their backsides off come up with something sooner rather than later, so that we can put all this behind us and start to get back to some kind of normal life, whatever whatever that will be. But I actually think there's going to be a lot of good stuff come out of this. It's crazy to think about that now, but I do think that it's going to make us all think about things and behave th about things differently, maybe value things that we didn't, maybe so much we will value more later. I know certainly for me it's time and people. That's the two most important things, because at the moment there are people I'm desperate to see and hug, and I can't. So uh, that's it. Uh, thank you massively if you are in any way, shape or form involved with the NHS or a, front, a frontline worker. Uh, you know, police, fire, teachers, shop owners, people working on cash checkouts, the bin men, the postmen, you name it, all of you. My hat goes off to you. Thank you so much for that. But folks, I'm going to love you and leave you. Uh, thanks again. And I will see you next time. Keep them peeled because I will let you know when that'll be. 
Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis, and I'd like to give you an overview of my full-length photography and retouching tutorial called Timeless. Now, at the beginning of 2019, I started the 39 to 45 Portraits project, where I travel the UK photographing our surviving World War II veterans. From the very start, I knew this would need to be done in their own homes, but I still wanted to create a classic look to the portraits that would look good now and in 10, 20, 30 years time and beyond. So I spent a lot of time perfecting the look I was after. Now, let me just add that this isn't a tutorial just about photographing veterans. It's a tutorial that will show you how to photograph anyone, family, friends, and loved ones. As photographers, most of us don't have the luxury of space, photographing in a studio and have loads of kit or work with models. We photograph everyday people in everyday environments, such as their homes, and with that come challenges with space. In my opinion, timeless is real life. It shows how to photograph everyday people in everyday locations and to get the very best results you can, but also make the whole process repeatable so that it becomes second nature. Now, I've been a photographer for over 10 years and I'm fortunate to travel teaching at conferences around the world. And yes, I am really proud to say that I'm a best-selling author of books on photography and Photoshop. But without question, the best time in my photography life has been the last 18 months or so when I've been taking these portraits. Keeping it simple, but creating classic portraits that have had the best response I could have ever hoped for. The kind of reactions that money just cannot buy. Nobody's seen it yet, apart from me. All right, and do you want to have a, have a look at it then? Turn it over. Oh my God. Oh, oh boy, that's a portrait. That's a real one. That is brilliant. Lovely, isn't it? You've even got that cheeky, silly look about it. It's like it. a painting. It's lovely. Oh, just look at that. What do you think? Wow, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it lovely? It's definitely you. Yes, that's <laughs> great. I'm very pleased. I guess I'm bound to say this, but this is the best content I've ever recorded. I wanted to show how you can create portraits with simple kit, not expensive studio equipment, and how you can photograph everyday folks and get that, oh, that's so them kind of response, rather than posing them in a way that is forced or giving them a completely unnatural expression. So that's Timeless, available now.